trailer looks epic. You did highlight I've been doing this for 24 <laughs> years <laughs> now. It was, it was actually nearly 25 years ago I was on that island for a year. But honestly, that, that whole journey across the Congo was magical. It was kind of everything you could ever want from a journey. The and travelogue, and yeah. I've done quite a lot, but it really, it really affected me. Oh. But, I mean, your last trip into the jungle, was it 2008, Ben? Was mm. it the, the one before this? It was a bit of a harrowing trip for you, wasn't well, it? Well, I, I did a series years ago called Extreme Dreams and I contracted a disease called leishmaniasis. It's, it's one of the world's neglected diseases, affects lots of people, lots of people die from it. And the treatment is pretty archaic. It hasn't advanced because not enough West, wealthy Westerners get it to, uh, for pharmaceutical companies to want to come up with a vaccine. So it's still a chemotherapy to treat it. And, and I was off work for a long time and, and had uh, some pretty extreme courses of, of treatment. So I did, uh, it, it was a struggle to go back into the rainforest where I was very vulnerable. I was living with the Benjeli. Uh, I was sleeping, you know, in, in the same uh, sort of structures that they slept in. So I was quite I was quite vulnerable to everything they're vulnerable even to. Though you're, even though the first time we got it, you were in Peru and this is in the Congo. Well, yeah, still so, the, same. so the, the disease, leishmaniasis, actually wasn't prevalent in yeah. the Congo, but there are plenty of other... Uh, how do you get the disease and what does it do to you then? Uh, the one that I got years ago was from the bite of a sand fly. Right. But, you know, the reality... That's simple. Uh, that simple. And, it, and it could be cured very simply. Like I say, it's one of the neglected diseases and I've, I've been working with charities to try and encourage pharmaceutical companies to come up with a vaccine or a, a better treatment, but that, that we're still waiting. Wow. Right, okay. So with this, with this show, um, did you have a good idea as to what you wanted to do? Because the Congo is so vast. Did you have a good idea what you wanted to do when you were there? Or, or was it a voyage of discovery like when you were there every day? Like how much, how much are you told? How much do you plan yourself? I, I wanted a proper adventure. I yeah. remember reading Tintins into the Congo, and I'm not, you know, that's not <laughs> the oracle of what no. the Congo is, but I think it, it, it's always been in my head that the Congo, what, what would it be like there? So I kind of wanted to scratch beneath the surface and find the real Congo. So the Benjeli is ancient Congo. Mm -hmm. this, this is people who have lived as they live for thousands of years, unchanged, one of the most beautiful, profound experiences of my life. But right through to modern day uh, Congo, which includes uh, th this extraordinary group of people called the Sapurs. The Sapurs are sort of Congolese dandies. And it actually, it, it, it comes from when the French um, ha had it as a colony, which was not a, a, a great period, mm -hmm. obviously. But many of um, the Congolese fell for French fashion and they still parade up and down in three-piece uh, tweed suits and bowler hats uh, with pipes through to uh, voodoo wrestling. One of the craziest, most bizarre, scariest, most eccentric thing I've ever seen. I can't wait for people to see it. It's wrestling, as we know it, but wrestling where they don't actually make contact with each other. All of the magic of the wrestling is in voodoo. So they use their hands to freeze people. They, I, I mean, I, I, wait till you see it. And they dress in hot pants and wow. uh, uh, miniskirts. So the tribesmen are still practicing all their ancient traditions still? The, the Benjeli that I lived with was just amazing, I, I, I have to say there. In, in my search as a kind of journeyman, a storyteller, it was everything that I want in my life. They live a simple, happy, humble, caring, thoughtful community life. They look out for one another. And I think I, I've been searching for something over the last 25 years. I think I, I turned 50 last year. And I think when you turn, when you reach that milestone, you start looking for meaning in, in life. I don't want to get too profound for you, but for me, I am searching for the perfect way of life. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of society, including myself, has, have lost their way. Yeah. We're constantly striving for more. We want more of everything. We're never complacent with what yeah. we have. And I say that with a great respect, because I know a lot of people are genuinely struggling when it comes to lots of finances, yeah. mental health. But for me, the Benjele live such a beautiful, happy oh. life. And I was really moved by it. I, it's very intense. You know, you're yeah. always, someone's holding your hand, someone has their hand on you. They're, they're in your face the whole time, but there's something really beautiful about that. Presumably as well, the mix of cultures in such a vast mm. area, like in a month, you could have been, you could have done six months there, I guess. Oh, I mean, I, I, I could have spent so much time. I went to see 
Western lowland gorillas, uh, which I've been filming for years uh, on Animal Park on the BBC. And I, oh, I, I, I've seen them in captivity. I've never seen them in the wild. And that was a really magical experience. We're wearing masks there to prevent us from infecting the gorillas. We were obviously very sensitive on this whole journey. When I say we, we myself and the crew, we were very sensitive to the Benjeli. We had an anthropologist with us the whole time and translator because, you know, th there is lots of cultural sensitivity when it yeah. comes to the people, but also the wildlife. Sure. So you're, you're out there, you're spending time with the most remote tribes in the world and you're, you're seeing all their practices of ancient traditions and, and they've, you come back and you say that we've like severed our connection. We've severed our connection with spirit or severed our connection with nature. Is it really hard to come back and adjust to our world now after you've been out there and experienced what you have? I, I find it increasingly hard to go from this extraordinary, really intense experience like I had with the Benjele, suddenly back to being a dad, children, modern life like, like, like we all do. And I kind of thrive on on those two very different worlds, but I find it increasingly hard. Yeah. The inequalities I find harder and harder. I'm so aware of how lucky and privileged I am in this country, let alone in the grand scheme of the world. And I find it, I do find it harder and harder and it puts more and more confusion into my already slightly confused brain. But I think I, I really like the fact that I'm able to actually make films that hopefully will make people think yeah. you know yeah. we, we were chatting about bushmeat for example yeah. Dermot, just just before this you know i've been a i'm a conservation con uh, a conservationist and environmentalist i've passionately campaigned against things that i feel are wrong but when i visited a bushmeat market and and they got really cross that we were there understandably you you kind of understand they don't have supermarkets rimming yeah. to yeah. to the top shelf full of food so they are forced to consume what lives in the forest but they do it not everyone, but a lot of them do it with, with fairness. Yeah. They protect and are, are careful about their consumption. Well, we cannot wait to watch this. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for another brilliant se series. Into the Congo with Ben Fogel continues Sunday at 9pm on Channel 5. Thanks, yeah, Thank well you. done, you. Thank well done you. you.